Today we're with Elias from QuickBits and we're going to show you the importance of injector flow testing. So Elias, you're halfway through yep. testing this box of injectors. Yep. Why don't you run through the procedure on one set, we're going to do eight at a time. We are going to do eight at a time, and I'm going to load up the QR right now. So the ones on the left here have already been tested? That is correct, and they're in chronological order. So we'll load up the QR right now. And what injectors are these we're testing? These are the Siemens 2400s. Very popular. Very popular injector. injector. Definitely. So you were saying earlier you do a 25% and a 75% duty cycle test? That's correct. But what we do first when we run our brand new injector is we flow them for exactly 60 seconds just to excite them I suppose. Just to check make, they're Make working. sure that they're uh, running as well. So now we're going to turn our pumps on and I'm going to fire all of them at once. The good thing is it gives you a gives you a sort of a visual as well as to how they're performing by doing them all in one hit, but they're not it's not accurate enough to take a reading. But if there was a major issue, you'd probably see it now. Oh yeah, if like if one injector was completely um, blocked, you'd see it straight away. Perfect. So we'll drain our tubes. So that was running at 75% duty cycle for the, 60, for the 60 seconds. And now we're going to drop it back down to 20 seconds and we're going to adjust our timer to 20 seconds, duty cycle to 25%. So what we're trying to do here is we're obviously trying to mimic being operational in, a, in an engine. Yep. And we'll do one by one now. So we just keep doing the same process until the the box is complete. You were saying earlier, you've only tested half of the box of 90 injectors. That's correct. And you've already seen a difference of 5% across the That is correct. Ones. That's hence, a lot. Hence the reason why we do this testing. And hence the reason why we, we offer a flow match set because they're, they're all random. In that box over there, I've just randomly placed them into that styrofoam box and we've randomly just taken them out and put them in and we've already got a discrepancy of 5.2%, I think it was. And I have seen them as high as uh, seven. I think 7% under full noise, if you were, you know, extracting as much power as you could out of an engine, you could possibly start hurting stuff. And if you weren't weary of that, if you didn't have the correct data logging, if you didn't have EGTs and so forth, um, in your particular car or vehicle, yeah, you wouldn't know. You wouldn't know any better. And on an, inj an injector like this, anything requiring injectors this large is making a lot of horsepower. So yeah. the window there for something to go wrong is only small in a lot of situations. That is correct. When we, when we offer these injectors flow matched, we sort them out at 75% duty cycle, and we add another filter at 25% duty cycle. So that, and then we sort them out from least flowing to highest flowing. And we have, so let's say you got the first four, you could possibly get a 0% differential. If you got the first six, you might get under 1%. If you got the first eight, you might get sort of 1.2, 1.4%. Depending on where it is in the box, you could again get zero, but some of the numbers are very repetitive as well. So in the middle of the box, you're probably going to get a whole array of the same number. And as I stated earlier, we try and maintain a particular temperature to within two degrees. And yeah, so if we were to run these injectors first thing in the morning on a cold day, I'd get completely different readings. Yeah. So we try and maintain a particular temperature and then that way we stabilize that temperature and 
because the injectors are firing, they're also warming up the media and the pump's running and it's also warming up that media. And it's, this particular system is on a closed loop. So the temperature is controlled and it switches on and off as required. Right, so we'll drain the tubes again and then we'll raise the duty cycle up to 75%. And we'll run them one by one again. So as you can see, it's filling up a lot faster now. It certainly is. Because it generally takes about four hours to do one box. Elise, you've just finished testing this particular eight injectors. What does the data just off this eight tell us? I'm just going to punch it in now. So the lowest one was 232, so 1562. And our highest one was 1602. 2.6, which is, which is acceptable, but from a match set point of view, we wouldn't be, we wouldn't like to offer 2.6%. If these were second-hand used injectors and we had to clean them and service them, 2.6 would be okay. We'd let them go out the door. But as a match set brand new, no, definitely not. So that shows the discrepancy just in eight random just, injectors. Just in eight random so you can see across the box of 90, you can see why it balloons out. Yeah. And then we put them in order. So as I said to you, that's injector number one, 10, 11, 20, and so forth, until we get to 90. So I can go back to the spreadsheet. And then what we'll do is we'll, we'll give these, the bodies a good clean with some brake cleaner so that we can put our own label on there. And then we'll just sort them in their random order once we've got our spreadsheet. So we'll print off some labels. We've completed the whole box now. So that's 90 injectors all flowed. And now we're gonna leave them in their current order, which is all jumbled up because I don't wanna mess up the yeah, labeling pro after process. All that, after all that, it'd be pretty yeah. easy to get them knocked up. So what will basically happen now is we'll just clean the bodies. And we'll attach a sticker around the, the body of the actual injector. And then once that's done, I'll then go back to the spreadsheet that we created and then we'll sort them from least flowing to highest flowing and we'll put them back in this box. Yeah, they'll be ready for, for customers to purchase. So what was the end result? So the end the result box? for this whole box was 5.2% differential. That's a variation from least flowing to highest flowing, yeah? That is correct. Let's say we've got two very low ones and two very high ones. If I can't match a set, a, for a customer, I'll keep those aside. I'll keep the two high ones aside. So when we get another box of 90, we'll fly those again and we'll try and put them in a, in a set that yeah. works. So at some point they'll, be, they'll match yeah. up with some yeah, other Yeah, definitely. Ones. Yeah. So what are we going to do here? We're going to run some different size injectors and yep. show some real world differences yep, of what and they we're fly. we're going to run them all at the same time. Yep. Do you want to run through which, what we've got? So we've got our Moran's 500. We'll 5,000, are they? 500 pounds. Oh, 500 pounds, yeah. sorry. These ones here are the Siemens 2400, the Deckers. This next one is a Bosch 2200, which is a gas injector. Very common. Next one after that is a Bosch 1650, which is another very common injector. Then we've got our Bosch 1100, and this is just a generic Holden LS1 Commodore injector, which is probably around about 200 cc's or thereabouts. So we'll have to go in and do an injector driver for each one of these injectors, because they're all different. So what uh, sort of, how do you, what sort of fuel pressure do you run that at? Well, in normal conditions, we would just run them at three bar, yeah. which is what, 45 PSI. In this test, we're gonna run them at 90, which the actual fuel regs already adjusted for that. Yeah. And we're gonna run the mechanical pump. So now we're gonna see if we can run them all at once. So I'm gonna switch them all on. And let's see what it does. Huge difference, eh? Hey? Yeah. Put 
the uh, LS injector, it's yeah. barely even registered. <laughs> As I said, some of our injectors, depending on the size of that injector, we have to sometimes, we normally run them at 20 seconds. Yeah. Sometimes we have to run them at a minute. At a minute. Purely because we can't register enough fluid in our tubes to be able to take a decent measurement. So we'd want to run them for a minute. Yeah. Um, and depending on the duty cycle of that injector, like if we were looking at 25%, Sometimes we have to run them at three minutes in order to get a good reading in that tube somewhere around there. Depending on the size again, if there was a 200cc or under, yeah. But in this case, the Morans, if we were to run it for a, for a minute, it would be coming out the tube. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so yeah. Even our Siemens, if we were to run them for a minute, we'd probably be up here somewhere. So that second injector, the Siemens 2400, we see that quite a lot in... Um Oh, sort of one of our eight second street cars. A lot of the, yeah. you know, high powered yeah. turbo street yeah. cars tend to run that injector a lot. So if you're running an injector, say an OE, a smaller injector, yeah. you can run it for three minutes. That would give you the opportunity to see if there's any faults. Correct. It's a bit hard to see that in maybe a five second test. That is correct. So we'd be running that injector across that three minute period and we'd be checking the spray pattern and would be able to, as I said, do a visual if there were four or eight, we'd be able to then go into each tube, put it into our, a different spreadsheet, and we'd be able to then go back, measure each one, mm. and we'd determine across that length of time yeah. whether or not there is a discrepancy, especially down low, when it, you know, you're idling around and so forth, if it's miss, missing and, and farting and so forth. So you're just giving the white top injectors a quick flush? Yep, just give them a quick flush, remove any debris, and we'll test each one individually. So this is our second clean. Our second clean, they've come out, we've let them settle down in terms of temperature, so they've just come back to equilibrium. So I've run them up once, and I was getting around mid sixes. So I've done a back-to-back -back test yep. to make sure that they're still roughly within QE, and they're sitting at around about 7%. So, so they haven't, haven't improved at all? No, they've actually deteriorated even more. Yeah. Previous, so after the first clean, they were 4.9, and now they're up to 7. So I'm going to call a spade a spade, and yeah, these injectors are eh, filthy. Yeah. They're not going to get any better. No. Now, I don't even know if these are genuine Bosch items. They could be a knockoff, because around that era, yeah. There are a lot of Chinese knockoffs going around in terms of white tops and indie blues. Yeah. So I can't really determine whether they are or aren't. So that could be a reason why. Um, yeah, but we're not going to waste any more time on these. I think two cleans is enough. So yeah, my recommendation would be not to use these in a car. But let's say that you had a car, you think that your injectors are running fine, they could well be. 7% out and yeah. you wouldn't even know. You wouldn't even know. So unless you were to bring him here or anywhere else to run the test, you wouldn't know any better. Yeah. So these could be running perfectly fine in a car, but once you've started to put it under load, it may start misfiring and may carry on. You could hurt something. 7% is, yeah, it's a fair way out. It is, isn't it? Especially on something that's making a fair bit of power. That is that's correct. Uh, I mean, that's a lot. you could cater for it if you had an ECU that you could fine tune each individual cylinder. Once we print off all that data, yeah. you could cater for it and start trimming each individual cylinder accordingly. But you can pull that, out some fuel. This test has proven that it could probably get worse. Well, yeah, it's not, as I said, it's not really improving. So, And you know, it's pretty silly to risk an engine oh, really yeah. over a set of injectors, isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. So yeah, my recommendation would be to the customer that they replace these injectors with an equivalent. These are a low impedance injector, so I'm not sure what ECU they're running. So yeah, I mean the 1600, whether the ECU is capable of running a, a high impedance one or a low impedance one, I'm sure it is. And then it just boils down to the size because injectors come in different sizes. Whether yeah. they're a full length, three quarter length, half size, you have to get adapters, whether they're 11 mil, 14 mil. So they're all sort of different in a way. There are adapters you can buy off the shelf to make a different size injector work in your in your case. Even though these are buggered, I will still change the O-rings on them and I'll drop in a set of new filters and then I'll label each injector individually so they can identify which one's which. 
let's say a customer brings in a set of injectors, we'll try and achieve a turnaround time of anywhere between 24 hours and 48 hours, depending on the urgency. If it's extremely urgent, we'll do them on the day, if, if, especially if the plate flow bench is free. If it's not, it'll be the following day. And again, it will depend on how they come up on the first one. Because if, uh, if they're filthy, and like these ones here, they haven't improved, then uh, yeah, this has taken us a couple of days to sort out. So there you go, this proves that your injectors might still run, but they're not running how you think they're running. So it's always good, especially on the E85 cars, if you've got the car sitting around and it hasn't been started in a while, it's always good to bring your injectors in for a service. We tend to find that a lot of E85 cars that haven't been driven in a while, they start to uh, gum up and they start to, I suppose, go sugary. Mm. Yeah, and I see a lot of guys, they run E85 and they might only start the car once every six weeks. Yeah, that's right. This is how all of our injectors go out, whether they're brand new or whether they're serviced. So they'll have O-rings, they'll have filters replaced. All your old stuff goes back into a bag. We'll then print off the flow sheet. So this is showing basically the data off each injector. Oh, and we've go. recorded the, uh, the ohms for each injector as well. There's the first test. So we keep one copy in-house yep. and one goes with the customer. That way we can always go back and check. And then, as I said, we try and do a turnaround time of anywhere between 24 and 48 hours on a customer set for, for, from a service perspective. And we'll, they can either drop them off and pick them up or we can send them out via Express Post.